Hello and welcome to The Real Sex Education After School. I'm Diggy Waite and I'm joined, as always, by accredited sex and relationship therapist Kate Campbell. Happy New Year's Day, Mum. Happy New Year, Diggs. And Yay. Happy New Year, anyone listening. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on New Year's Day. How are you feeling, Mum? Are you hungover? No, of course not. No. I'm in the pink. You're in the pink? Yeah, yeah, you're wearing pink today. I love that. And I'm wearing a Guinness... Uh, oh, dear. Guinness thing, because obviously last night I was on the beers. Exactly. Start as you mean to go on. Me bouncing around. You are. You. I, I, feel like, I feel like shite. Mm. I feel like dear. I should be doing it an Irish, shouldn't I, if I'm wearing my Guinness thing? Oh, have you got New Year's resolutions? Well, wow. We've stepped on that pretty quickly, haven't we? Oh. Um, wonderful. Let's talk, because we, we've been asking for the last few weeks, we've been saying to people, what are your New Year's resolutions? Let us know. And you guys have, you sent some of them in. Oh, but I obviously took to the internet as well to take a look at what other people around the sex and relationship sphere, what some of their New Year's resolutions are. Okay. And here we go. How about this? Uh, they split this into men and women. Okay. Um, this is and exciting. they say, yeah, so 34% of men, when asked about their New Year's resolution, said they wanted to have more sex compared to just 16% of women. Yeah, well, that's going to be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Potentially, lots of unless... men having sex with men. Yeah, which obviously, yeah. as we know, um, happens a lot. In fact, mm. actually, what we've been doing recently... I think it's going to happen a bit more <laughs> in 2024. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because if they see the statistics, they'll be like, right, yeah. well, we've only got one chance. Go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, exactly, which, you know, works. And again, even if they, they identify as straight, as we know, the, our lovely episode with Dr. Joe Court, he explains that straight men can have sex with men. So, lads, get out there. Start having, shagging each other. Um, so that's a good one. <laughs> then we've got this one. Next year, I want to find love. 17% of men said that. Just 12% of women said that. Mm. Yeah, which is quite sweet from the men. I mean, I, I mean I'm liking that. 9% of men said they wanted to start a family compared to just 5% of women. There's a lot of men wanting things, isn't there? Yeah, a lot of men creating... Res and I have to say, I'm, I'm so I am surprised by those statistics. Well, hang on a minute. So it might be the percentage of men who responded. So my guess would be that more women would respond to, to, to this kind of question. But they're too busy multitasking. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so more, if more women respond, so 16% of women is going to be more than 34% of men or whatever it was in that case, if the, if the cohort's bigger. Yeah, potentially, potentially. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, just trying to work it out. You and your blinking figures, you nerdy <laughs> yeah, nerd. Yeah, I, I was doing a lot of fact. <laughs> Did you call me a nerd? Nerdy nerdkin, I called you. <laughs> nerdy nerdkin. Yeah. Unbelievable. I can't believe I'm being called out for being a nerd by my own mum. <laughs> um, you should know that by my, the Christmas presents I got. You, you should know I'm a massive nerd. Enough. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. Here we go then. Here's some of your New Year's resolutions. Before we kick that off though, have you got any? What, New Year's resolutions? Yeah. I'll just carry on being as amazing as I am, I think. Oh, man, every year. And you know what? You smash it every year, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you do such a good job. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Don't take the mickey. Let's move on <laughs> <laughs> rapidly. <Let's> move... <laughs> <laughs> so New Year's resolutions from some of you guys. I like this one. This is a good one. To give less of a fuck about the things I do not love. Yeah. Good. Thoughts on that? Is yeah, that going to be one of yours as well? I think that's a nice one. W excuse me. <laughs> well, I, I should get, give less of a fuck about the things I don't love. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess so. But I was going to, you know, try and learn to drive, but maybe... Well, you, um... you, you, you know how to drive. Do I? You, you know how to Why drive. Why do I have you a green license then? You just don't know how to pass your driving test. <laughs> right. But right, you can okay. drive. <laughs> I certainly don't have to do my, learn my driving test. Three failed exams. And what's really funny is that well, I always see my driving instructor. He lives down the road from me and he's driving around. He always is very sweet. He waves or he says hello. And I just always think... He just sees me walking everywhere, so he knows that I still haven't passed. <laughs> he just, he, it's always when I'm walking on the road, and I'll just see this, this this guy stick his hand out and wave, and I'm just thinking, he must just think I'm a complete... Is he waving? Oh, God. You're right. He's calling me a tosser. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> He's shouting, walking wanker. No, he may Bus think bastard. that you really, really are being kind to the planet and not, yeah. not creating any of your own emissions. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> he, he clearly hasn't come close enough then, has he? Because <laughs> those Brussels sprouts on Christmas Day are still having their effect. Oh, how yeah. I managed to slip those Brussels sprouts into your meals over Christmas was brilliant. I don't know. Oh, I, I'll tell you what, you did a great job there. And, you know, I'm almost maybe going to... No, I'll never like Do them. Do you know, I love sprouts. I yeah. adore sprouts. Fuck it. In the poll, we're putting, do you like sprouts or not? And <sighs> people on Spotify, get in the poll. People on Instagram, get on the poll. Oh, I've thought of another. Ways to use sprouts as a sex toy. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because I'm I just, just... <laughs> at the moment, I'm just thinking. <laughs> No, don't think about that. No, don't no, no, I'm that. thinking. No, I stop am thinking. thinking. Mum, you've got... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you got such a crazy look in your eye. I don't like this new year, new you. Oh. She can she can go. And we can't do this because remember a few weeks ago when we said that garlic was good for hemorrhoids? You know, we got, we got people were saying they were like, I had to do a disclaimer saying don't do this. <laughs> well, because you better tell people what I said you should do. <laughs> <laughs> repeat it all over again i said clove of gl- garlic um can relieve hemorrhoids didn't i um yes, a bit you did. and there is some evidence that it can there is also some evidence that if you if you go sticking cloves of garlic into your bottom you can cause some damage so that is advice to take with caution exactly and ever since that i think i want Better to stay see doctor, away to be honest yeah see your doctor and that's the that's the advice we you'll get another thing that's soothing Live yogurt. Live yogurt. Live yogurt. Yes, but live yogurt is fantastic for thrush. Yes, yes. We you put it on a sanitary pad and then pop it into your pants, and that is fine. However, before anyone does that at home, covered in disclaimers. Yeah, but before anyone does that at home, please, please, please consult your own medical advisor. Right, I this, have not. If you've just seen the crazed look on this woman's face that I have, <laughs> you would know she is not someone to be trusted with this sort of thing. She wants to stick a Brussels sprout up her... I have said nothing about where you would stick a Brussels sprout. I was just thinking, thinking about alternatives. And there was, oh, although... <laughs> that was quick. We, well, I really think we should move on from this because okay. this is a, this is a, this is going to be a nightmare. But guys, if you get any good ideas, let me know. Yeah, that just, just send her those messages. Don't go to at the RSE Pod on Instagram or, or TikTok or X. Do go do. Mm. Formerly known as Twitter. Formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. Quite right. <laughs> um, here we go. How about this one? New Year's resolution: Learn to take time and not to rush into things. Okay. Yeah, you didn't rush into that response. No. Nope. So that's good. So you're taking that on board I'm already. I'm taking that I on board. I think that's right. And I wonder if that's in a relationship context. I think that's a good idea, maybe. Yeah. And to take a bit of distance and, and really think about things. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's a good one. Think How about this? twice before you insert anything into your bottom. Yeah, we need to move off this, I think. I do think we need to move off this because <laughs> I just think the messages, uh, the lawsuits. Have a relationship. Uh, this person's in. New Year's resolution is to have a relationship for the first time. Oh, bless. Yeah. What do you think? Good idea? Mm. I, I sort of think, you know, don't focus too much on having a relationship for the first time. Focus on having a relationship with someone that you want to be in a relationship with for the first time. Do you know what I, I mean? I would say enjoy the relationships you've already got because, you know, I'm guessing that this means have a romantic relationship or a sexual relationship. Yes, But, you know, so. you've got re- other relationships in your life. Enjoy until a sexy one comes along. God, that's such good advice. She is good. Okay, you're back in the good books. You're on the you're on the nice list again. Because <laughs> that it's is on good the naughty advice. list. It, um, well, that's the thing. Already, right. it's no. It's only January, and I'm on the yeah. naughty on Santa's naughty list already. Yeah. No, but you, you, like I said, he's just scrubbed that off again, uh, okay. which is good. Okay. Um, okay. This one isn't really a New Year's resolution, but it was a response. It just said, "I'm still a virgin." Laugh emoji, oh. which makes me think that their New Year's resolution perhaps is to tr- have sex the first time. But again, mm. I think. Refer you back to the last one. Just enjoy your existing relationships. And Can then... I just say something about being a virgin? You may. I believe we have a question coming up about this. Should we? Let, should we? Let, let's do that. Should we? Should we? Should we ask that question as well, and then we can talk about virginity? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. Do that. So, that. So, so this question, uh, yeah, it was sent into us on our anonymous Google form, which you'll find in the bio of this episode and the bio of our social media channels. Again, at the RSA Pod on Instagram. TikTok and X. Formerly known as Twitter. 
You forget every time. <laughs> and this person said, I am a virgin at the age of 28. Please advise how to deal with this. The context was they're straight, female, and I have not been in any relationships. Every time I made it to almost third base, I call it quits. I would like to know if anything is wrong. Okay. So your thoughts on what, what are you going to say about Virginia? So what I was going to say about being a virgin is people are very hung up on losing their virginity, whatever the heck that means, you know, what whatever you think it means. Mm. So for this person, I'm guessing it means they want to have penis and vagina sex. And so they can say they're not a virgin. Okay. Um, sex is sex, whether you put penises in vaginas or anywhere else, or don't mm. put them anywhere, it's still sex. So, you know, popping your cherry whatever you want to call it it's you know maybe you've already maybe have already done it without knowing if you got to third base maybe that's you know depends what you call virginity um mm. there's that the other thing is i see a lot of people as clients for treatment for therapy because they rushed into this they really? thought i want to get it out of the way as fast as possible mm. and they are left with trauma right wow because it wasn't fun because yeah. they had drunken sex with somebody they didn't like and then regretted it. Mm. I, so. I mean, uh, yeah, so so definitely don't rush into it. What I would say, though, just on the other end of that spectrum is I know a lot of people who did something similar and it was that thing of, you know, we were all at school. And yeah, we want to get it out of the way. Yeah, Well, yeah, and it's just like because you can't, because your parents, if you, if you invite, firstly, if you invite a, a partner around to your house, your parents are like, keep the door open the whole time. You will not be having, they need to go home by 8 p.m. Blah, 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 blah. You can't be doing this, you can't be doing that. Blah, blah, blah. So then you end up having sex instead in people's gardens. Or um, cars. Par- or cars or fields or at school in random places. In the art room. Par- in the art room. Okay, don't want personal examples. Um, yeah, and then people do it when, at like drunken parties and stuff. And it's actually, in my mind, a lot worse in those scenarios. So like you say, drunken mistakes. But what I would say is for a lot of people, that might be their first time. But ultimately, you know, as they get a bit older, they're just sort of like, oh, yeah, it's that thing I did. And yeah, I mean, so I don't a, want to for, say it no, no, no. Cause... For a lot of people, it is something they want to get out of the way. They're glad they got it out of the way. Mm. They think it was a hoot. And yeah. that's absolutely fine. But for other people, they rush into something. I mean, the point is, why is it that you want to get this thing over with? What 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 is the reason? Where is there status? Is there? What is it? What is the thing that is so great about having? done it you know well i wonder whether people are afraid that that when they do have sex that they won't be good at it because they won't be they won't have any experience well to be honest with you fumbly fum you're not going to be good at fumbly sex with somebody that you don't know very well that's you're not it's not going to be great you're not going to have a wonderful time from that point of view probably i mean it's it's unlikely you'll have you know, multiple orgasms or anything. You know, it's just, it's probably not going to be a wonderful experience. Now, this person who's not getting beyond third third base, they're yes. saying they get to third base and then call it quits. That makes me think if they're talking third base, this they're, they're probably doing that thing of getting into bed with somebody that they don't know very well or going behind the bike sheds or, you know, wherever it is. At 28, I hope you have your own room and you are in bed mm. or something something similar you've got furniture but the chances are this is not this is not a relationship where you're close to the person yeah. and and if you and you know if 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 stopping being a virgin is means so much to you then the first time should maybe mean a bit more to you and and make it a bit more special with somebody you know a bit better but it- but is this the problem because it's like i make it to almost to the third base and call it quits but is that they're actually placing too much emphasis on third base and yes. home run? Yes. And so... Yes, absolutely. But, 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 but if I got to know someone, wouldn't it then... Wouldn't maybe it matter more? I, mean, I can understand why they're worried because they, now we're saying to them, place... Are we saying place less importance on it or place more? Well, it depends on them, really. It depends on what they want. But, I mean, so I don't know... Obviously don't know the context for this mm. and whether the person I mean I don't have anything against casual sex I'm not absolutely not saying that mm. and what I'm saying is that you might though have a better time if you do it the first time with somebody you know mm. and it's something that you really want to do because you're aroused and because you like the person rather than it's something that you have to have a drink to do 
and that you don't really want to do. I mean, I think the reason that you're getting to third base and then stopping or nearly to third base and stopping is because you don't really want to be in this situation. But maybe if you were with somebody that you liked more, it would be okay. Or maybe, you know, the first few times you, you're in a sexual encounter, if you want to be having sex with someone, you can, but just not intercourse, leave it. Yeah, I, but I, I sort of think, but it also in some ways, the fact that you've got to this scenario where you're almost getting to third base means that maybe you do want to do it, but there's just something part of you that's then when it gets to the point, you're like, oh God, no, I am scared. But it's well, not like I don't want to do it. It's just, I'm just nervous about it. Yeah. Absolutely, and 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 that's why it's it, you you won't be as nervous, presumably, if you're with somebody kind and loving that you care about and who cares about you. Yeah, and, and they who are out there. Has tons of experience and is really handsome. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. Also, fuck me. Come on, let's be honest. The first time you have sex with someone new, quite often, is bad anyway. Whether yeah. you all have loads of experience or or not, that's why you know a lot of people that have lots of casual sex. You know, both they're like, yeah, I've had sex with loads of people, but it's actually like, yeah, but you, because you haven't learned the other person and what they like yet. Yeah, it's all a bit so whatish. Yeah, yeah, and and you come away, and yes, you might have racked up loads of numbers, but actually, what your your how good quote unquote good you are at sex for every new partner isn't that great. So what I'm trying to say is, don't go in there ex- expecting this person to expect that you're going to be good at it. Mm. because or or that you know or that it has to you know you're laying everything down the line i t- tell you what there is a lot of people say that when they're young and they're just fiddling around and they're you know really young just f- fooling around and they're not going to have mm. intercourse and they just k- kind of you know have the odd orgasm maybe or just get very very aroused and it's all and it's all very kind of innocent because they're learning on one another that that is the best sex they have in their entire lives because after that, that that worrying about being good enough kicks in, response pressure kicks in, performance anxiety kicks in. And from then on, you know, it's it's all just pressure, pressure, pressure. You're making is, a face. Yes. No, I'm making a face because you fucking you're hitting the nail on the head. And I can't believe you haven't said this sooner. Oh my God, let's turn this on its head. This is a really good bit. Like, it's like when people go, oh, you know, young love or whatever. And you think mm. back to, I remember, you know, sorry. Yeah, well, right, enough, but enough. No, I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, when it, when I was really young, not really young, but when I was like 14, 15, and basically, you know, my girlfriend would come around and, and I'd be too scared to do anything. We would okay. basically be chatting. No, no, no. no, no. What, 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 listen, Modesty. and we just basically kiss okay. for like maybe an hour. That's nice. That would have been lovely. And that, was the best thing in the world it, exactly. it was so great and exactly. i think it's because you there's all this there, there's this almost the nervousness and stuff plays a role in the whole thing and it's actually really exciting so this person might well, need to yes i mean tap into that, that and, and enjoy the moment fooling around is pleasure central and uh, it really is and i think once you start worrying about whether or not you're going to have intercourse and how you do it that's that's when that's when pressure kicks in so actually you know so there are few, fewer women have orgasms through intercourse i mean quite often the way couples do it is to wait for if you know straight couples wait for the the woman's orgasm and then and then have intercourse that a lot of people do that and some some people have a little bit of intercourse stop do fool around do something else have a little bit of that's not a bad way of doing it because that way you're edging that's quite exciting there isn't there isn't all this pressure on thrusting and getting that right and you know contraception and all of this you can you can just relax and enjoy yourself and i think Mm. that's what this person should be doing if there is a reason underlying this there's a question and we would like to know if anything is wrong maybe i mean i would say do you think there's something wrong because you can go to you can go to the gp you can you can have an examination to see if there's anything that that is physically wrong the Mm. chances are they will 100 percent reassure you very unlikely that there's anything physically wrong if you think there's something emotionally wrong, maybe you've had a bad experience in the past with an attempt at intercourse or something like that, then, you, you know, psychosexual therapists could be really helpful. So, um, yeah, or, so or, a, or and, and ideally, a psychosexual therapist also trained in trauma. Mm, so mm. that you've got somebody who knows about both. And chances are you'll crack it. But really, don't get hung up on virginity. It's, it's, it's not even a thing. It's a social construct. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just really like that as well. It's, I guess the question you should be asking yourself is, 
you know, are we about to have sex? Are we having sex? The question is, am I having fun? Am I having a nice time? And, precisely, and precisely. Then that, that, and then the rest will, will follow from there. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Okay, let's take a break because we've got more questions to get to and uh, we'll fly through them right after this. Welcome back to the Real Sex Education After School and a happy new year to you. I hope your new year's are still going well, whatever you're doing right now, driving in the car or doing the washing up and or clearing up after your big party last night. Healing um, sprouts. Oh God, let's not get on the sprouts thing again. Uh, let's instead talk about something else green and uh, maybe a bit black, uh, Spotify. Someone uh, messaged up on Spotify and said, can testicle pain be a psychosexual problem? Yes, it can. Um, sometimes people, Ooh. well, it can be psychosexual because because pain can interfere with sex. So you can, so, right, you, you know, right, right. so a psychosexual therapist would p presumably be helpful with that. I think maybe the, the, the person on Spotify is, it means, couldn't it be a psychological problem? Well, yes, again, it can, but you can't take that for granted. And if you're mm. asking this question because you've got testicle pain, then I really think get that checked out because there are reasons that you can have pain yeah. that require to help. I mean, if you get sudden pain, listeners, suddenly get pain in your testicles, that's a medical emergency. So you need to head to A&E, quick smart, really, mm. with something mm. like that. If you've got really, really serious sudden pain. But you can get achy testicles if you if you become aroused for a long time and don't ejaculate. That can cause achy testicles. Um, that Known which as is blue balls. Blue, yeah, that's, that's, yes. yeah. Well, we know about that. Um, if you have an infection, that is the probably the likely cause of painful testicles. Sometimes people have been kicked or or twisted or hurt themselves. They might have an injury. They might have a hernia. If you've got a little lump um, in the groin or in your testicle, that can be a kind of prolapse of an organ into, or usually a bit of gut into the yeah. into the testicle. When we know all about that, yeah, I can yeah. attest to that. Also, it depends on your time of life. So, if you're older, sometimes um, you know a hernia might be more likely, or, or you might have even sort of varicose veins type things or cysts. You know, there are all kinds of things that you can have. You know, we know men should always examine themselves. When you've had a shower, just examine, you know, roll your <laughs> testicles around in your hand and have a good feel and see if anything feels different. So if you've got any lumps or bumps, usually they're cysts and things like that. So take that to the GP just in, in mm. case. But, you, you know, cancers often don't cause pain. So mm. painless lumps are kind of a problem. But I would get anything unusual Get it checked out. Absolutely. Get it checked Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and whenever you go to, whenever I've been to a gum clinic or anything, they always just check your balls there anyway, which is really kind of them. And I think even for my, I don't think they did this, but for some reason I feel like they did that when I had my hernia as well. Because it was, it was in that area, in the action zone. I think when they were down there, they were like, well, we might as well check your balls for well, you as well. Well, of course. Like, well, I mean, it's an opportunity not to be missed. Exactly. Yeah. Done by a professional. But always, Absolutely. you know, it's got to the point, you know, when they say you should check your balls once a month after a shower or whatever, it's just every bloody time I go in now. So I'm like, well, oh, I'm yeah. Here. I would say Mark. do it every time. Yeah. Yeah. N notice. Roll them yeah. in your hands. See if any, it, like what you're looking for is symmetry. There's there's that sort of wiring at the back, which always you're always a bit like, Ugh, but, but honestly, you'll get that checked out and they'll be like, yeah, it's just the wiring. So look at some pictures of what <laughs> the, the insides of, well, I don't know how to, uh, there's probably a word for it, but it's just basically wiring. But what you're looking for is symmetry. You know, mm. if, if you find a line on one side that isn't on the other, that's when you need to be like, hmm, how hard is it? All that sort of stuff. And mm. that's maybe you need to get something checked out. But yeah, like yeah. you say, don't think, oh, I've just got pain on my balls because it's psychological. It's just in my head. Yeah. Definitely get that checked yeah, out. Yeah, it's always worth it. I mean, chances are it's nothing at all, but it's always worth being checked, being re checked for reassurance and sooner rather than later. Don't leave it. All right. One last one. This is a good fun one. Here we go. Recently, during sex with my partner, a small bit of poo was on the sheet afterwards. This is fun. <laughs> it's fun for me. Oh, this is a great okay. question. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, had multiple orgasms and it was very intense, but I didn't feel when it happened. My partner was great about it. I wouldn't have mentioned it if I hadn't brought it up. 
but now I'm feeling myself holding back during sex in case it happens again. I always make sure I'm clean and don't have sex if I feel the need to go to the toilet, so I'm not sure what else I can do to make sure it doesn't. Do you have any advice? I've never enjoyed sex so much with anyone else. I used to really struggle to relax enough to orgasm, but it's been so different since meeting my current partner, and I don't want this to affect our sex lives going forward. I'm a female, 34 straight. My male partner is 36. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? As you said, it is It is a nice one, actually. It's a great question. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So, well done for relaxing so much that you pooed. That's fantastic. And <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm... Um, d- d- it's one of those things. I mean, I, I would think if you were, you know, in, in the throes of ecstasy and having a really cool time, something like that might happen. You know, that, that would yeah. not be the end of the world. If, if you're, you know, your partner's fine with it, you're right. You shouldn't let this affect you going forward. It's just, mm. you know, it's just one of those things that happened. And sometimes even when you're really, 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 really clean, a little bit of poo gets left and would may have popped out when you were, uh, being particularly vigorous or something yeah 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 i mean that's the thing so i just i just think you know for me here as well it's like how did your partner react because you you're worried because of, you're, you're embarrassed because of how someone else will perceive it well the only other person there was your partner and they were really cool about it yeah. so remember that that's the only thing and if they weren't i'd be like screw them because come on this is the action zone we're talking about here this is the splash zone the, the next door like famously there's that thing is like oh i'm a pair of balls my next door neighbor's a penis my, next door, my other next door neighbor's an arsehole um this is the action Do zone we're talking. well is that is that basically the joke <laughs> saying <laughs> sorry, did you get this in a christmas cracker <laughs> yeah and it's a shit one literally <laughs> mm. um basically what i'm trying to say is this is the action area. The next door neighbour of a lot of the genitals that we're talking about, the next door neighbour, or maybe an included part of the whole play, is the anus. Yeah. Things are going to happen around there, and sometimes yeah. this sort of thing happens. I mean, I was saying the other day, I was having a chat with some of my mates, I don't think any of us had never had some sort of fart during sex as well. Like, it's, it's just, these things happen. <laughs> yeah. Why are you laughing about that? I was just thinking of the sprouts so this, again. <laughs> no, for- <laughs> See, that's another reason why you shouldn't stick them anywhere or eat them. Any, not even in your mouth. Oh, no, they're um, so nice. They're delish. But yeah, honestly, it sounds like your partner's great. I yeah, mean, it sounds like orgasms. you're having a great time. It's just you're having a great time. You're having a good time. If you're having a great time, he'll be having a great time as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so just chill. Bit, a no bit of poo's never going to ruin A bit of poo is not going to ruin anything. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Get over Clean it. Clean the sheets. Clean yourselves, and then otherwise get straight back down to it. God, you, it just sounds like you've got a great thing going. Yeah, on there. it's lovely. What a way to start the new year! Oh my God, am I right? Yeah, God, I love that. Excellent, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do keep sending those questions in, and please keep rating us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You know, on Apple, just go to our show page. It'll be at the top of Spotify. You've got to scroll down on Apple, but please keep those ratings coming in. It really helps out. Keep sharing this podcast, guys. There's going to be people who don't have anything to listen to to start their new year. Maybe send them this. Oh, make this your new year resolution. Listen to the real sex education. Exactly. exactly. And you're going to, you know what was really sweet, actually? An uh, 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 Instagram user who goes by the name of M Cheeky. Um, she did a she did a, she did a selection of how you're going to have the best sex in 2024. What podcast you should listen to? The first one she mentioned, us. Oh. And you know what? She's been talking about sex. I think for she does it every day on Instagram. She talks about it every day for like 100. And, she's done it for like 200 days or something crazy like that. She knows about sex. She's a qualified sex educator, and she put us on that list. So come on, guys, Fantastic. that's your New Year's resolution. Get subscribing. Get following. Comment on YouTube that you love us. That's just for us. I'd like that. Um, and yeah, guys, keep, keep keep listening and we love you so much and we'll see you next time, next Monday for some more Real Sex Education. Bye. Bye. <laughs>